So I think that I might love Xenoblade Chronicles X. In fact, I think that it may be one of my favorite games of all time. And I'm not even finished with it yet. I'm only about 30 hours in. Howdy folks, how are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and today I would like to discuss with you how and why I started playing Xenoblade Chronicles X ooh, about two weeks ago now, and why I cannot put it down. Uh, so minor story spoilers ahead. I'm only going to be discussing kind of the early hours of the game, and I've got a lot of footage recorded, but I'm only going to use uh, footage from the first couple of hours as well. So. Uh, nothing too bad. If you saw my Xenoblade Chronicles 3 direct reaction video, then you'll know that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is my most anticipated game of the year. In fact, for the longest time, it was the only game that I was excited about this year. Uh, thankfully, we now know for sure that Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope is coming out this year. Yes, that is my second most anticipated game of the year. And with the announcement of Crisis Core Reunion the second half of this year, it's finally starting to look really promising. I am not a longtime Xenoblade Chronicles fan. I got into the series, like many people, in 2020 with the release of Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition on the Nintendo Switch. I actually have it right here. I've got so many Xenoblade games. I've got it right here. As well as Xenoblade Chronicles 3D. Thank you, Micah, for this for my birthday. Little brother, thank you. Appreciate it. I've never played it, but I own it, and that's cool. How did this thing even run on a 3DS? I don't understand. This, though, was a complete ground-up rebuild of the original game that came out on Wii in depending on where you lived, 2010, 2011, 2012, it came out in the US a bit later, and fans had to absolutely fight to get this game released. Not, not this one, but the original released in North America. Definitive Edition includes some quality of life improvements, overhauled graphics that brought the art style more in line with what you'd see in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, uh, but it still stayed faithful to the original's own unique identity. I really enjoyed my time with this game. I thought it was a lot of fun. And as soon as I wrapped up Future Connected, which is the bonus story mission that's included in here, takes place a year after the main game. Uh, I decided to put it away uh, because I didn't want to start too immediately. I didn't want to experience any kind of burnout and then I immediately started playing too. Same day, maybe two or three hours in between. Now I absolutely loved Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I liked one, I really, really liked one, but I loved Xenoblade Chronicles 2. The world of All Rest was such an intriguing concept to me, uh, and it was so well executed that I spent a large portion of my over 100 hours in that game just running around and exploring all of the Titans. I thought the story was really good as well, and I was surprised to see how much they tied it in with the first Xenoblade Chronicles games. A lot of people, when I got into the series, uh, told me that I didn't need to worry about playing one before two, or playing two after one, or playing them in any kind of order, because they were only very loosely connected, and you didn't really need to play one before two or anything like that. Um, but having played them both myself now, I think those people are crazy. They're absolutely connected, and sure, you don't have to play one and then two, but the reveal at the end of two makes more sense, and I think has way more impact if you've played the first game. And I'm not going to say what the reveal was, just suffice to say, if you get to the end of two and you're like, well, I'm underwhelmed, then you should have played one first. That is all I will say. My favorite part of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, though, was the characters. And I guess that the roster in that game could be considered something of a spoiler, so I won't go into it. Just understand that I love them all. All of the characters in two, I love them. And so far, that's really the only criticism that I have for Xenoblade Chronicles X, which I do have. It's the subject of today's video. Of course I own it. On the Wii U, naturally, no, no doubt. I guess we should talk about it now. Often viewed by many as the beloved black sheep of the family, Xenoblade Chronicles X released between 1 and 2 in 2015 on the Wii U. It does not directly tie into either of the other games, instead being its own story and its own timeline, as far as I can tell, uh, relying mostly on heavy influences from the other Xeno titles, including Xeno Gears and Xeno Saga, to earn its title as a Xenoblade game. Also, I think that I worded that a bit weird. It's heavily inspired by Xenoblade Chronicles as well. I just meant that in addition to that one, there's influence. You get it. Because it isn't considered to be part of the mainline series, that being Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2 and soon 3, when I finished Xenoblade Chronicles 1, I went directly onto 2. Uh, I did go through the effort of tracking down a Wii U copy of X and shelving it for future play, but I didn't get around to it until now. But why now? With Xenoblade Chronicles 3, my most anticipated game of the year, on the cusp of release, why now delve into a game that How Long to Beat reports will take 68 hours just to finish the story? Well, you see, I got bored. After recording my reaction to the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Direct, I felt this unshakable urge to play some Xenoblade. Now I could have jumped into Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and continued to explore that world, maybe focused on doing some Blade quests, 
Uh, I could have gone through Torna again, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 DLC, that is a full game unto itself. I'm not joking either, it, it really, I've got that physical as well. They, they released, it's such an expansive DLC that they released it physical. I bought this physical, I've never opened it because I bought it digitally as well, but I was like, I gotta have this. I want it, I must have it, and I must go and get it for me. Such a good game. It's not even, it's a DLC, it's such a good game. Definitely do not play this one before this one. <laughs> Please. It's a prequel, but please play this one first. This one? Okay. Then this one. Then this one. And then this one at some point. Anyway, Torna. I knew that I could have finished this game before 3 came out, but it's a sad game. And I didn't want to be sad. I definitely didn't want to restart 1 or 2 either and attempt to finish those before 3 came out, because I knew that I would not be able to complete either of them in this short time that I had. So I'd either end up playing them concurrently with three, or more than likely, I would end up leaving whatever I started unfinished, which would not be great either. I have this thing about that. I didn't want to do that. So instead of doing that, I decided to jump right into X. I figured that if it was truly as different from one and two as everyone says, then it wouldn't matter if I finished it before three came out. I could happily play them concurrently, no problems, barely an inconvenience. Funnily enough, though, I might actually end up finishing this before 3 comes out. In fact, I might have over 100 hours in this game before 3 even ships out to stores. All right, let's discuss how that happened. How did this game capture my attention to the point that I've basically dropped everything else I've got going on in my life, and it's being a bit hyperbolic, to exclusively play this game? I just realized like the glare from the light, I gotta hold it just right. There you go. Xenoblade Chronicles X differs from Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2, and presumably 3 in many ways. This is not a bad thing though, yes I love those games, and no, I would not want them any other way than the way they shipped. That said, X does things differently, and for the most part, it's been a welcome change for me. For starters, X focuses far more on its world than does its story. And as such, the world is truly front and center, with characters and plot largely taking a back seat. To explain the world though, we do need to discuss the plot a bit. So here's a quick primer that might be considered a spoiler if you want to go in completely blind. This is all explained in literally the first five minutes of the game with a big opening cutscene though, so... X takes place in the future, where a devastating war between two alien species leaves Earth destroyed. The last remnants of humanity narrowly escape aboard the massive ARC ship L002 aka the USS White Whale, a name that I am sure is not alluding to anything. Two years later, one of the alien species catches up with the White Whale and forces it to crash land on the mysterious world of Mira. That is the setup, and really, the story only serves to get us to Mira. Mira is the focal point of this game, as far as I can tell so far. Remember, I'm only like 30, 35 hours on. This world is absolutely massive, and impressively, it's all one large, continuous landmass. Yeah, there are islands and oceans, but what I mean is that you can travel from one side of the map to the other, on foot, between all zones, and never see a single loading screen. No fades to black, it's just one big world. Think Breath of the Wild, only grander. And I say that as someone who loves Breath of the Wild, and really enjoyed exploring that world. It was and is fantastic, but Mira is just way larger. Bigger mountains, bigger trees, bigger plains, bigger deserts. It's such a grand game, yet in spite of its absolutely massive scale, it is far from empty. There's something for you to find around every corner, up every mountain, down in every cave, and the missions available to you as a blade, we'll get to that, uh, will take you to every nook and cranny of this massively expansive world. It is insane to me that this game was made for and ran on the Wii U. It seems far too grandiose for that little system to even attempt to run it. I'm surprised you didn't see the rash of Wii U spontaneously just combusting in the weeks following this game's release. It is an amazing world, and this game, so far, for me at least, has been worth playing solely to just explore Mira. But you aren't just exploring the world for the sake of seeing the many breathtaking vistas on display here, no. There are many gameplay reasons to push beyond each new horizon. To discuss that, we'll have to talk a bit more about the story, but again, very early game things here. So Blade, I mentioned it earlier. What is it? <laughs> Blade is a acronym, and I've got it written down here, okay? Uh, because there's no way I would remember this otherwise. Uh, it stands for, at least in North America, Builders of the Legacy After the Destruction of Earth. And yeah, it's awful, isn't it? But it gets better. According to the wiki in Japan, it stands for Beyond the Logos Artificial Destiny Emancipator. 
which is way worse. That's so much more awful. And I don't know if that's true. That's just what it says on the wiki. The devs absolutely came up with the name Blade first and worked backwards from there, which is fine. I understand why they did it. It's called Xenoblade after all. That name is justified in Xenoblade Chronicles 1 by having an actual blade be the focal point of the story, while 2 did something similar by having a whole species of living beings known as Blade. So they had to do something in X to make it tie in with the title of the franchise. Anyway, pulling from the Xenoblade Chronicles wiki here, <clears throat> Blade is a military organization whose primary goal is finding and securing the redacted for story spoilers. Beyond that duty, Blade also explores the alien planet Mira, combats any dangerous indigents, indigenous aliens, gathers resources for New Los Angeles, and expands Frontier Nav. That helpful summary from the wiki, which I've edited just a bit for the sake of brevity and to avoid any unnecessary plot elements, more or less explains everything you'll be doing as you play through this game. Exploring Mira, fighting hostile indigens, finding and collecting cool stuff, all in the service of New Los Angeles and humanity as a whole. Oh yeah, New Los Angeles, or NLA, is a fully sized and explorable city that was on board the White Whale. As the ship was crashing down into Mira, the city was jettisoned and landed in a region known as Primordia. That is where you'll begin your adventure, and I guess that we should cover that first hour or so of gameplay here, because that's really where the main differences between this game and the other two in the series make themselves known. Monolith Soft does not shy away from the fact that X is a very different experience from the game that preceded it, as well as the game or games that followed it. You do not play as an established character in this game. No backstory, no friends, no family, no hometown, nothing. You start the game in proper RPG fashion with a character creator, and then you are thrust right into the action. Now I won't detail exactly what happens, but suffice to say, if you were hoping for a character like Rex or Shulk with a heart of gold that you could root for through all the hardships ahead, you'd better manufacture that character in your head, because what you're given in this game is a blank slate, and honestly, there isn't much you can do to shape them. You do get to choose your own name once you wake up on Mira, but the community has given the character the non-canon moniker of Cross because the game is called Xenoblade Chronicles X. Cross X. Cross. You get it. You are not given many opportunities to make choices that would truly shape what type of person your character is. Sure, in most conversations you have a few opportunities to choose a response, usually something along the lines of either uh, be prideful or be humble, or be sarcastic or be respectful. But after 30 hours of gameplay, what options you choose in dialogue very rarely seem to amount to anything other than the person you are talking to having a slightly different response, and then the conversation carrying on exactly as it would have, regardless of what option you chose. As an example, very early on, you are offered a position with Blade. On a whim, I decided to decline it, thinking that maybe the game might actually have some sort of consequences for turning down the offer, but no, the fella just keeps asking if you are sure until you change your mind and agree to join. The lack of character choices having any real impact so far really does make me wonder why they even bothered giving you a blank slate in the first place. Your character does have amnesia, so I guess it kind of works with that, but they could have given us a Shulk or a Rex type and it wouldn't really have mattered. In fact, if I'm being honest, the story doesn't really matter at all, it's just a vehicle to get you into the world. All I'm saying is that if I was playing a character I liked, I would probably enjoy the game more than just the blank slate that I'm given with no personality whatsoever. It can be the exact same game with the focus on the world, while also having a main character with a history and a backstory that we care about. If you're gonna go RPG with it, you gotta go all the way with it. You don't just do this sort of half toe in the water being like, you can design your character and you can give him a name, but none of the choices you make really matter. Cause that's what it feels like. And at that point, just give me an existing character with a rich history, backstory, personality, someone I can like, grab hold of and, and root for. The lack of any character for the main character is really just a minor gripe for me. The side characters so far are not as engaging or as interesting as the side characters in Xenoblade Chronicles 1 or 2. You usually have a set party for story missions, but when you are just out exploring the world and doing most side content, you are generally free to take any assortment of fellow Blade members with you. I think that this lack of a consistent party that you spend all of your time with has definitely led to me as a player feeling less invested in the lives and backstories of my party members. Even though I have been pretty consistent in keeping two particular party members with me at all times, those being the two party members that you'll need for basically every story mission. One of those two party members is Elma. Elma plays a pivotal role in getting you started on Mira, and she has just absolutely nothing interesting at all going on in terms of backstory, interests, personality, nothing. Maybe that will change later on in the game, but for the most part she's a blank slate. Her class and combat style are cool, but in terms of characterization, 
She is as paper thin as paper can be. The other of the two is Lin Lee Koo, or just Lin. She's a genius and expert engineer, really handy to have in a fight at 13 years old. Sure am. 13 years old inside and out. She's actually one of my favorite characters in the story so far because she's kind of, like, really the only character in the story, if you know what I mean. She's the only one with any kind of personality. I like Len. Len's cool. I wish Elmo was cool. I wish anyone else in this game was cool. Actually, that's probably the problem. All of the characters are cool. So cool that they're not interesting. There are other characters, a few of which do manage to be intriguing in their own ways. But again, for the most part, the game is about the world of Mira, so the characters just serve the story, and the story just serves to get you out and about exploring and experiencing Mira. Now, to give the game its dues, the broader story does have me hooked in one aspect, and that is the mystery of it all. Why did two alien races decide to duke it out over Earth? How did the governments of Earth know that this was going to happen enough in advance to build these Ark ships? Why did the aliens, who are supposedly there to fight each other, also attack fleeing Earth ships? Why did they destroy Earth? Why did they pursue the White Whale? Why are they still hassling us on Mira? Who is the real villain and what is their motivation? Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2 both do an excellent job of telling the player who the bad guy is and showing you why you need to stop them. Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2 also do an excellent job of pulling the rug out from under you towards the end of the game, revealing that everything that you thought that you knew was only a half-truth at best, if not an outright lie. The real villain gets revealed, their true intentions are made known, and it's always a fun ride to watch it all go down. I have to assume that such a twist is coming in X as well, and I'm really excited to see what that twist will be and where it will lead, so please don't spoil it for me in the comments section down below, thank you. Twist or not, the story and characters aside, the world of Mira is the star of this show, and the gameplay within that world is what really makes it worth the 10 plus hours that I am sure I'm going to be investing in it. Combat is similar to Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2. Uh, like an MMORPG, you pick your target and combat begins. Your character will swing or shoot automatically, and it is up to you to focus on positioning yourself in the right place and executing special arts at just the right times to give yourself and your party an edge in battle. There's a lot going on in this system, far more than I could possibly hope to delve into here, and so far the game has done a very poor job of explaining things to me. Most of what I've figured out about combat I have figured out through trial and error and by perusing menus and seeing something called spirit voices and wondering what that even was. Turns out it's an absolutely essential element of the gameplay combat experience that was never explained to me. If you don't catch on to what spirit voices are and why you need to care about them, it will make every encounter with anything and everything even approaching a boss dang near impossible. And don't even get me started on Overdrive, I still don't know how the heck that works. Even though I still feel like I am going into combat blind, I do enjoy it. I cannot say that I like it more than the other games, but I don't think that I like it any less either. Maybe once I actually get my head wrapped around it, I'll be able to decide for sure if it's the best, worst, or just on par with other games in the franchise. But right now I'm actually pretty neutral with it. It's fun, I just wish it explained itself better. People complain about the obscene number of tutorials in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, but at least I knew what I was doing in that game. It told me what it wanted me to do, and it told me how to do it, which is way more than I could ever say for X. I'll probably end up watching a combat tutorial at some point, but as of right now, I think I'm figuring it out doing okay. Did I mention Frontier Nav earlier? Because I was definitely supposed to. Frontier Nav is basically your map. You go around Mira, planting these data probes in different locations, and they reveal tiles on the map helping you explore and move around more easily. You can also fast travel to any previously placed probe by using your, CMU, uh, your Wii U's gamepad. These data probes also mine the precious material Merinium, which can be used to invest in various arms manufacturers and probably other things that I just haven't figured out yet. You can install different types of probes to either generate revenue or mine other materials in certain locations. It's a cool and surprisingly in-depth system if you want it to be. You can also just plant regular probes and never think twice about them again. Finding a new probe location, reaching it, and planting the probe is actually very satisfying in and of itself, so I spent a lot of my time just doing that without any sort of story or mission prompting. Speaking of story missions, as a Blade, you have a ton of them that you can accept for the people of New Los Angeles. Most of them are either fetch quests or monster fighting quests. There are also these affinity missions, which have cutscenes that are fully voiced, uh, some are necessary for story progression, but most of them just seem to be optional and only exist to build relationships between characters and give you more details about what's going on in the world. It's worth doing regular and affinity missions, if only for the experience and the rewards gained. You can get some pretty cool stuff. Do you want a bikini top? Because there's like a ton of those, apparently. Now, there is one other element of the game that I haven't touched on, 
and it is something that you can get access to after Chapter 6, which I just completed myself, and it completely changes the way that you traverse and interact with the world. And it is great! It is really, honestly, truly great, and if you've ever played the game before, you know that I'm talking about the Skell. They're big mechs. The game calls them Skells, and I won't go into detail about what you have to do in order to get one, but once you do, it changes the way you interact with Mira in such a profound way that it genuinely feels like a different game. 30 hours in, and my entire feel for the game shifted hard. Not in a way that is better or worse, just different. You can move so much more quickly now, jump so much higher, and further reach places that seemed impossible before, fight enemies that you could not face before on foot. Yes, you are inside of a giant mech, so the world might feel smaller around you, but because of the additional range of movement, you can now reach so much more of the world than you could before, it actually makes it feel more massive and more expansive than it already did. I've only had my skull for like a few hours in-game, but you bet your bottom dollar when I'm done with this video, I'm going back into the game and I'm just flying a skull around. That's all I'm doing. I say flying. Mine can't fly. Yet. But I think that's something you get later on. I'll have to make an update video about this at some point when I've actually finished the game and confirm whether or not you can fly a skull, but I think you can. I know this might seem like a weird video, basically just me saying, hey, I am playing this seven year old game and it's been really fun, but I don't hear people talk about this game enough. Everyone adores Xenoblade Chronicles 1, myself included. Intellectuals such as myself love the vastly superior Xenoblade Chronicles 2, but everyone I've ever heard speak about this game talks about it as if it's some other that exists you don't really need to engage with. And I think that's a shame, because if people had talked about this game the way that I have today, I think I might have played it a lot sooner. I did search YouTube before sitting down to record this just to see if anyone else was making videos about X, and I found several from folks trying to encourage their viewers to give the game a shot. But the Discord over X is not nearly as loud or prevalent as it is for the other two games, and that's just a shame, because even though I am only 30-ish hours in, I can already tell that this is one of those games that I'm going to have in my ever-expanding and evolving favorite games list for years to come. So if you have seen a, if you have a Wii U, I should say, I definitely think you should give this game a try. I think that it's well worth your time, and you had better believe that as soon as I am done with this game, I'm going to be making another video to continue talking about this game, because I can't wait to see and share what else it has in store for me. Now time for the obligatory things I need to mention or it's all that will be discussed in the comments section. I know that this game has a cliffhanger ending. I don't know what it is and I don't want to. I do genuinely believe that the focus of this game is on the world so much so that whatever happens at the end of the story, it's not really going to subtract from the experience I had of playing and exploring Mira. So even if it does end on a cliffhanger, I will be upset about that, but it's not going to be something that keeps me from playing the game because the game is just a lot of fun to play though I do hope it gets wrapped up someday. I have seen the theories that this game will tie in somehow to 3. I actually discovered this by myself by playing this game and going to certain locations, and I was like, wait a minute, this looks like the trailer from Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Like, a lot. Like, the locations... The... The... Plant, what? That's sus. So I decided to look it up, and sure enough, there were tons of theory videos about people basically being like, look what I found! And I was like, okay, well, I can't watch these yet because I haven't finished this and I don't want it spoiled for me uh, by watching these theories videos. But I, I, look, I'm hopeful. I think that would be really cool. I don't know how that would work having played this game and knowing how it differs, especially the opening from one and two. I don't really see how they can be in the same universe, but technically one and two weren't in the same universe really. Let's mention this and if they wanted to, they could make it happen. If they wanted to make three, not just be a sequel to one and two, but a combination of all three games that came before, they could do it. And that would be cool, but I'm not necessarily expecting it, hoping for it. I'm not going to be disappointed if it doesn't happen. I will be disappointed if we don't get an X2 at some point, though. So Nintendo, make it happen. Give Monolith Soft all the money. Third, I am aware that other Xeno games exist. Xeno Gear, Xeno Saga, they're out there. In a sort of nebulous sense, they're all connected. Like, they're not all part of the same overarching story, but there is the object that we all know about that is in 2, that is visually represented in this game, and that plays a bigger role in, in, in Saga and in, in, in the Gears. Um, so in, in a sense, they're all connected, but I know they exist. I haven't played them. 
but I know they exist. Hey, since you've stuck around this long, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I said that I had a bunch of footage from this game, that's because I've been recording an entire playthrough. And I've been uploading episodes of a Xenoblade Chronicles X Let's Play to my YouTube channel, uh, Howdy Folks LP. LP could stand for Let's Play, but I like to think of it as Long Play, because all the videos on there are like 30 minutes or longer, that's the goal at least. If you want to watch me play through this game, I will have a link down below in the description to the playlist with all of the episodes that are out right now. It's not quite all the way caught up to where I am in the game, but I'm trying to turn them out as quickly as I can. In fact, I might be getting a laptop to edit when I'm not home so I can continue to turn them out more quickly. Uh, <clears throat> but that's neither here nor there. Do be warned, if you're a big fan of Xenoblade Chronicles X, you're probably going to cringe and and shake and shiver and gag at watching me try to understand the game and just being very dense and not getting it for large swaths. So just be warned in advance that that might be the case. And I say that this is a secret because I haven't really announced the fact that I'm uploading videos to Howdy Folks LP to my broader YouTube subscribers. I'm going to get around to it, but I wanted to wait until there was a large collection of videos on there. And then I'm going to make a sort of general announcement video saying, hey guys, secret. This is like a hundred videos available now. That might be a while. It might be a few months before I'm ready to make that announcement. I was kind of aiming for December, but we'll see. So keep it keep it between us. You can go over there. Go watch those videos. Subscribe to that channel. Have fun, but don't go mentioning it, you know? Just keep this between us. And Gilliam, who already found the channel and has commented on every single video I've uploaded so far. Hi, Gil. How are you doing? That does it for me here today. I hope that you folks enjoyed this video. I hope that you're able to give Xenoblade Chronicles X a try. I think you might like it. Uh, until next time, I hope you folks have a wonderful day. God bless each and every one of you, and I'll see you later. Bye!